In this video, we're going to learn how to ingest data into ClickHouse with the Go client. So we're going to be importing this performance CSV files. So you can see what sort of data we've got in there. And if we just have a quick look how many rows we've got, so you can see it's 11.5 million. Now we're going to open ingest.go and csvreader.go. And if we look in the main method, you can see we take in a file name and a number of workers. And then if we look a little bit down, you can see we initialize a channel and then we call a function called read CSV to channel. So let's come over to the csvreader.go file and you can see we've got the read CSV to channel function in here. It takes in a file path and a channel. So we open the file, we create a CSV reader and then if we come down a little bit, you can see that we're then iterating over the CSV reader and writing each record into the channel. If we now come back to ingest.go and we come down a little bit here, you can see we iterate over the number of workers. We then call the processed records function for each worker. And if we look down a bit, we can see what that's doing. It's iterating over the rows in the channel and then incrementing the size counter. And then if we look up a bit, we can see we then print that to the screen. So let's just quickly run that file. And we'll, and we'll speed it up a little bit. And you can see it takes just over eight seconds to compute the result. Now we're gonna launch our ClickHouse client and we're gonna create a table for the data. We're gonna create the quad key. We'll have tile wicket. Now this field is gonna be ephemeral. So this is where we're gonna put in the raw wicket text. And then the next field is the one which is actually gonna be stored. So it's gonna run the read wicket polygon function on the tile wicket field, unless it's empty, in which case it will be an empty polygon. And then we've got a bunch of other fields as well. So now let's go back to our Go file and we're gonna import the ClickHouse client and a few other libraries as well. And now we're gonna write a connect to ClickHouse function. It's gonna be a simple one. We're just gonna pass in a host and then we'll connect to the, with the, the, to the default database with the default username. And then we'll handle exceptions and, and connecting as well. Now we're gonna go back up and we're gonna update the code so that we can connect to ClickHouse after the rows have been added into the channel. Then we're gonna add in another function that we're gonna need, so strconv. And now let's come back down again and we're gonna write ourselves a new ingest records function. And so what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna create batches of rows. And so each batch is gonna ha have an insert into performance table. We're gonna list all of the fields and then we're gonna return that batch. And then if we come down, we're gonna create a new batch. We're gonna create a little counter that's gonna keep track of how many records we've processed. We're gonna iterate over that row channel, creating variables with the, with the appropriate uh, types for each of our fields. And then we're gonna add those into the batch. We'll then check whether the records processed is a multiple of the batch size. And if it is, then we're gonna send that batch over and we're gonna create a new one. So let's now come back up to the main method. We're, we're gonna add in a batch size. So we'll, we'll default that to a size of 10,000, but we'll allow that to be configurable from the command line. And then we're gonna go and change what function we're calling to call the ingest records one instead. And now let's go and delete the stuff that we don't need, otherwise the, the program won't, won't, won't run. So we'll take out process records. Let's take out that var, that size variable. We'll also take out the printing of the size and the sync atomic import at the top. And now let's run that function again. And while it's running, we're just gonna come over to another tab and we're gonna create a watch of on the, on the table. So we're gonna say from the performance table, count how many records we've got and then format it nicely and show me the current time and then we'll format it in a, a nicer way as well. And so you can see it kind of comes through. We start with 5.15 million, 5.66 million, 6 million and so on. And it sort of gets to just below 8 million. Now let's have a look at wh what one of those imported records looks like. So we'll come over to another tab, we'll select just one record and you can see we've now got a record successfully this is what a successfully loaded record looks like. And if we come back again, we'll wait a few more seconds. You can see it finally completes in just under a minute. Most of that time is taken converting the wicket string format into a polygon. If we didn't do that, it would be, it would be significantly quicker. And if we come over to our other tab again, which was counting how many records we've got, we can see we've now got all of them in 11.55 million. So we're gonna be creating more videos showing how to use the various language drivers. But in the meantime, if you found the data set 
we used interesting. Check out this video here where we look at it in more detail.